In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be to you, the brethren. We are approaching the year 2020 in a few days from now. And we will be saying goodbye to the year 2019. God is a God who loves us to humble ourselves before him. God loves humility and he hates pride. And God wants us to come to him through Jesus Christ because Jesus is the door, the door to eternal paradise, the door to heaven, the door to eternal peace. Through Jesus, we get to the Father. As Jesus said himself, no one comes to the Father except through me. We must be born again. And we are born again, not by a corruptible seed, but by an incorruptible seed, which is by the word of God, Jesus Christ. As it is written in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us as a light shining in the darkness. And Jesus said, my word is spirit and life. If we take these words to heart, then we will understand that Jesus of Nazareth He established a church. He established a body of those who would come to eternal life. This body of Christ, if we look at the first apostles, When the church was new in Pentecost, on the day in which the Holy Spirit came down from heaven to the first 120 in the upper room, when they were celebrating Pentecost, There was nothing really formed as a body or as a church at that time because it was the beginning. And we can see from that day of Pentecost that things were changing. That as the church got together it was beginning to grow. We know that they were in the temple praising God daily. We know they were breaking bread daily, having the Holy Communion. They were not only changed by the Holy Spirit in the way that they were born again to live a different life than they lived before as Jews because they were all Jews but they were Christians now they were Nastreya they were followers of the way and Jesus being the way as he said I am 
the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except through me. The way is straight and narrow, and only a few will be saved. God working with the early church from its beginning through the Holy Spirit kept these holy apostles together and they began to grow as the body of Christ as changes were coming, as revelation was coming, as they met in that first council in Jerusalem, and they were deciding what things should the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers accept in regards to the Jewish law. And they had this meeting, this council in Jerusalem. And they said, it seems right to the Holy Spirit and to us, meaning the apostles, that these things should be this way. So they had this council in Jerusalem. And they discussed these things so that the church coming together can grow into this body of Christ pleasing to God. So we begin to see even there as we read in the Holy Scriptures that changes were happening, that, that there was growth there, that as the early church was forming that the apostles being the foundation stone and Jesus being literally the capstone you had this foundation stone of Christ through these holy apostles by the Holy Spirit and they began to teach to the to the believers how they should live and how they should be having a heart of love and caring for one another ministering to one another each other's needs making provision for one another so that no one lacked anything and we begin to see all these things which the apostles through the epistles the writings of the apostles in the new testament of the of the way in which these early christians were to uh believe and and the way they were to worship and come together and nothing changed after the first century nothing changed in that first century to the point where it went from being a church of believers to a church of non-believers. No, the church was growing because of the Holy Spirit. And you begin to see these teachings of the apostles such as holy tradition and the holy tradition as St. Paul said to Timothy, keep these traditions which we, the apostles, are teaching you. They were teaching about Jesus of Nazareth and who he was, who he is. And these first believers or these first disciples of the apostles, they began to remain steadfast in the teaching of these apostles. And this is very important because what it shows is what the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy 
we read that there were presbyteros, priests. There were elders, erondas. There were deacons. There were bishops, episcopos. You see how things began to be formed? And then you had the episcopos, the bishops, who ordained the presbyteros, the priest. There was these holy orders. There was these ordinations taking place. And these first presbyteros would go out teaching in their communities, in their churches. And they were the shepherds of their church. And the episcopos, the bishops, were the shepherds of their priest and their church. And the deacons were there helping the presbyteros, the priest, to serve. The erondas, which would have been the presbyteros, the priest. They were the elders, the priest. And this word presbyteros, taken from the Greek, means priest. It doesn't mean a pastor or or anything like this. It means literally a priest. And so you begin to find out as time is going on, as we come into the year 200 and the year 300 and the year 400, by the time you get to the end of 300, you already see the Holy Orthodox Church. You see their holy tradition as St. Paul said to St. Timothy, keep these traditions which we the apostles are giving to you. Whether by word of mouth, many holy tradition was taught by word of mouth. And he said, or by epistles, meaning by things that were written down. So you had holy tradition by things who were passed on and by word of mouth, and you had holy tradition by things that were written down, like in the epistles that we have. So you see very clearly that this church in the year 200, in the year 300 and 400 was the holy orthodox church. It was the holy orthodox church. They were orthodox Christians. The word orthodox meaning right glory. It is a correct glory, a right faith, a correct belief. And this is evident. This is factual. This is a fact. This is not something someone is making up. This is a fact. You had these men who became episcopos, bishops, as successors of the first apostles through Timothy and these other disciples that the apostles made into presbyteros and episcopos, bishops. So you had this clergy, you had this, this holy orders, you had this, this um, hierarchy here. This is from the Holy Spirit. As you begin to move on into the third and fourth uh, century, the three, four hundred years after uh, Christ had ascended into heaven, Jesus of Nazareth, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and now the succession of these holy apostles, these church fathers, were all orthodox, and they were on the old calendar they were continuing on in the teaching of these apostles and the faith was orthodox so today in the year 2020 as we come to 2020 find an orthodox church go see what this faith is and what it was and what it will be to the end of time. The true Christian faith, Orthodox. It hasn't changed other than the new calendar leaving the true uh, apostolic way of Orthodoxy. 
through all this ecumenism, this heretical ecumenism, does not come from God. This ecumenism doesn't come from God. We keep our faith orthodox and on the old calendar, and we're not part of this ecumenical things. Others in the Orthodox Church may be part of it, but we're not. So we are therefore more shunned and more persecuted and people don't want anything really to do with us. It's hard enough for somebody to become Orthodox even on the new calendar, let alone for people to become Orthodox on the old calendar where you suffer more, where you are persecuted more. But the faith is always going to be without this ecumenism, without this uh, heretical teachings, without these things that are um, so-called new calendar teachings or the new calendarists. All these things are heretical. They don't come from the Holy Spirit. They do not come from God. They do not come from Jesus Christ because they were not there in the first 700, 1,000 years of Christianity. As I just said, in, as it's written in the Acts of the Apostles, the way things would be done, how the first council in Jerusalem, how the first apostles said, it seemed right to the Holy Spirit and to us, these things should be this way. It was a unanimous decision when all of the holy apostles got together. And it was the same way in the first ecumenical council where all of the patriarchs and bishops got together from all the patriarchates, of five patriarchates, and they all came together. It was unanimous. It wasn't uh, like these decisions of synods of bishops doing things outside of the canonical laws of the church outside of all these canonical laws of the church outside of the holy rudder the canonical books of the orthodox church and then all of a sudden they uh are saying that they can do these things and they begin making these changes and submitting themselves to to more and more things the way the pope of rome was in 1054 who who wanted to uh, have the um uh, the faith of him being the vicar of Christ, the supremacy of the Pope, and, and all of these changes being made and, and agreed upon only through a short amount of people that were not even Orthodox. They were all people who were leaving Orthodoxy, not remaining in it, but leaving it, and became the Roman Catholic Church, and further on became Protestants and so on and so forth, and they got further and further away from the old calendar Orthodox faith. To really study Orthodoxy and its spirituality and its theology and to understand uh, everything about the Orthodox faith, you have to study the Orthodox faith for the first 700 years to really know what Orthodoxy is, what true Orthodoxy is. So I believe, as many fathers of the church have said, and also as many monks of Mount Athos have said in Greece, where they've had over 1,000 years of Orthodox uh, Christianity, they made it very clear that in these last days, a lot of the true Orthodox will not be found in these big churches and cathedrals, but rather they will be found small groups in homes and houses and some living in the mountains and in the forest, in the woods. Because we will be persecuted. We will be persecuted. And that's exactly where I'm at, persecuted. And there are handfuls of minorities of Orthodox Christians keeping their Orthodox faith on the old calendar and being persecuted. May God bless them all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Find the true Orthodox Christian faith in the first 700 years and live that faith out in Holy Orthodoxy because that is the Holy Tradition. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the true Holy Spirit. And that is the true faith and the true worship of God the way the Holy Spirit wants this kind of worship. Not these Protestants. 
No. That is apostasy. That is the great apostasy. That is, that is taking the mark of the beast. Protestantism is taking the mark of the beast. It really, truly is. It is a, a private interpretation. It is everything done in pride, and, and it is not done. They want to say it's done by the Holy Scriptures, but it is not, because there are episcopos, there are uh, successors, orthodox succession of the apostles and the bishops to the present day. You find those orthodox on the own calendar, and you find them and you stay with them. And may God bless you and save you through his holy orthodox faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.